Hey guys, hi, how are you? I recently got a personalized place for our 2024 Genesis GV70, and in this video, I wanna take you through the process of getting personalized plates, step by step. I went to the local DMV and asked all the questions regarding uh, recent changes to the way you get personalized plates, waiting time to get your plates, how to allocate your personalized plates to your vehicle, how to keep your personalized plates once you sell your vehicle and wanna keep those cool plates. By watching this video, you'll save time, a trip to the DMV, and potentially a headache. But before we dive into the steps, let's take a quick look at the fascinating history of personalized plates in the United States. But if all you wanna know is the particular configuration that I was able to get for the GV70, just fast forward to this second right here so that you get it out of the way. Personalized plates, also known as vanity plates, have been around for quite a while now. Did you know that the first set of personalized plates were issued as early as 1931? States like Pennsylvania allowed car owners to add their initials to the plates and this trend quickly caught on. License plates themselves have an interesting history. The first state to require license plate in vehicles was New York in 1901. But back then, car owners had to make their own plates with their initials. It wasn't until 1903 that Massachusetts issued the first set of state-made plates. Personalized plates evolved over the years. By the 1960s, states began offering vanity plates, allowing drivers to choose custom messages, names, and clever combination of characters. Today, personalized plates are a popular way for car owners to express their individuality. I particularly like seeing plates that are easy to decipher, even better, perfect spellers. I'm one of those weirdos that I'm always looking at vehicle plates and I'm trying to figure out the meaning of the characters. My first set of personalized plates date back to uh, 2014, I'm sorry, for my E30. Before that, I had no interest in customized plates. I will just usually go with the random numbers that the DMV picked for me. But it was actually one of those days that I was looking at random vehicles at a gas station that I saw a cool second generation Toyota MR2 with plates that said the MR2. And then I thought of the idea of the E30. I checked if it was available at the DMV and the rest is history. Actually, that zero is not a zero, but more like an O. Uh, for some reason, the letter O is not available for configuring customized plates. But things have changed over the years since 2014. At some point, if you didn't allocate the place to your vehicle, you will lose that configuration. And that's what happened to me in 2021 when I found this cool character combination for my 2021 Tesla Model Y. I didn't go to the DMV and follow it up with the allocation and I lost my set of plates. I mean, I still have the plates, but they're just a cool souvenir now. Here are the steps to get personalized plates in California. I would like to know for those of you that are watching this somewhere else outside of California, if it is the same as here. I'm even more interested in seeing if other countries give you the option of personalized plates. I've been to many countries and I don't think I have ever seen plates other than sequential. So let me know in the comments. First, you'll need to check if the desired combination is available. And this is one of the things that have changed for the worse because before you could just go to the DMV and start playing with potential configurations to see what was available. But now you're required to enter the current license plate that you wanna replace along with the last three of the VIN of the vehicle on which the plates are gonna go to. So this kind of sucks because you no longer can get plates and put them in a vehicle that you wanna give as a present to somebody. You first have to have the information on the vehicle and then get the plates. There are of course a few configurations that just won't be allowed and these are the most common ones. And for a full list, feel free to check out the DMB website. The department shall refuse any configuration that will be misleading or is any of the following. The configuration has a sexual connotation, a vulgar term, or a term of prejudice or hostility. The configuration is a swear word or a term considered profane and obscene or one that misrepresents a law enforcement entity. You could also go and waste your time at the DMV, but who likes that? And I say this because the DMV no longer offers certain services, at least at the local offices that I went to. But I find the DMV portal to be way easier than the paper application at the DMV, which I used last time I went, and is way too complicated, but it doesn't expedite the process at all. So why go to the DMV? Keep in mind that you will pay many more fees than you would if you just stick to the regular plates. In my case, I've gone with personalized plates along with special interest plates, which carry an additional fee 
that varies depending on which ones you go for. Like in the case of my legacy plates, I have to pay $50, but many others can go up to one or three. And because this is California and fees is the word of every day, you do have to pay between $40 and $83 in renewal fees, depending on which type of special interest place to go with. And the good news is that you no longer have to go to DMV to make sure that you allocate the place to the vehicle, as now you can get the new plates along with your registration with the updated license plate and a set of stickers. As recent of last year, you still had to go to the DMV to get new registration showing the information updated and the set of stickers. And that's how I wound up with no month sticker for my TSX, which I picked up for free this time that I went to the DMV. But it's still confusing because the new set of plates still come with a card that says bring them to the DMV along with the license plates and registration. And when I got there, even the receptionist told me that I needed to do that process there. Otherwise, I wouldn't have wasted my time like I did. And uh, I could have done everything online. But I don't regret going because I still got that extra sticker for the month that I needed for my TSX. Regarding waiting times, they have gotten a lot better because they said I got it in a little shy of five months and the TSX plates, they took about eight months. But at the same time, the ones that I ordered for my 830, they still have to make them because they were white plates and I ordered legacy plates and I ordered them at the same time that I went to allocate the place for my TSX and it's been about almost nine months and I'm still waiting for them. In other videos, I have talked about what motivates people to get personalized plates. I think it's a personal choice. I usually order them because I'm not into modifying vehicles. I don't customize them at all. I like the stock look. I don't even tint my windows and stuff like that. Look at my old BMW. Most of the modifications that I have on that vehicle, they're period correct OEM parts. So what really sucks about my channel is that, and I admit it, is that you won't see very exciting videos about modifications and stuff like that, which makes my channel kind of boring. So personalized plates is as far as I go. And make boring YouTube videos where nothing happens. For my GV70, I decided to go with the type of configuration that I tried in other vehicles. So if you have watched videos on my other two vehicles, by now you can guess exactly what my new place spell. And that's it. Getting personalized plates is a fun and easy way to add a personal touch to your vehicle. But I want to hear from you. Do you like personalized plates? And if you have them, what are you trying to say about yourself or your vehicle through your plates? What do you think of this upgrade? Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. And something I forgot to mention is what happens to your personalized plates once you want to get rid of your vehicle? Well, you're going to have to go to the DMV and allocate sequential plates again to that vehicle before you get rid of it.